Okay. I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, you know, we knew the University of Tennessee was a very talented team with good size, good speed. You know, when you flip on the film, uh, you saw some great personnel and, uh, you know, they made some great plays. And, you know, but the one thing that I do know is that our kids competed. Our kids competed hard. Um, you know, I challenged them at halftime to win the second half. Uh, you know, that was a 10-3 uh, second half. I really felt that our kids, uh, you know, were a better football team uh, by playing this game. We schedule these games. We schedule up uh, to get ready for the MAC, and our focus is on us and uh, and to get ready for OU uh, this Saturday. So with that, I'll open it with any questions. Jeff, how, how do you assess where you, where you are given the, the caliber of opposition that you play with? I mean, you can sometimes say you're one and four. Look at Ohio, they're four and one, but you look at who Ohio's beaten and you can say, like, man, eh. you know, when you look at who you've lost to, you know, three of those games, I think people would say, well, well, I like where we are, you know, and, and you bring up a great point because uh, uh, that's that's really what we discussed yesterday, uh, you know, in regards to uh, what our preparation has been getting uh, these previous games. Uh, you play a team like Tennessee, you play a UConn, you play uh, a Pitt, you know, those are the kind of games you want to measure your football team against uh, when you're scheduling non-league games. That's always been my philosophy. Uh, now what we need to do is really assess – uh, our effort, you know, I want to look at our football team and our effort and the calls that we're making, the execution of those calls, and we got to clean up some of those things at this point. But you know, I feel good that our kids have uh, been against uh, some of the very best, and we know OU is going to bring their very best. We know they're a quality football program. They've played in a lot of postseason play. Uh, they played for the MAC championship, and their program is, uh, you know, is on solid foundation. Coach Solich is a great coach, and you know, it's going to be a great challenge and great test for our kids. But I like our approach, and I like where our kids. Went into you know back into Mental Monday. We had a 24-hour rule, and then we're getting ready to go. So you know, I feel good. These kids are excited about getting out there and playing in the MAC uh, and the East Division. You know, with a great team like OU coming in. Coach, I wanted to ask you, told you guys actually about the tunnels in the game. Uh, second week, you guys are facing pretty prolific uh, passers. You know, obviously, you watch film on them. What does he do technically that impresses uh, both the guys? Yeah, he's an accurate thrower. Um, you know, he, he makes good decisions. You know, he's able to keep uh, plays alive. If things aren't there quite right away, then, you know, he'll move around in the pocket. He can beat you with his, uh, his legs, uh, you know. And, uh, you know, the one thing that, that you can never measure is the competitive fire in a, in a human being, in a guy. And I think he's got uh, a competitive edge uh, that I think has really kept them in a lot of games. You know, he's been, uh, he's been good with the, the surrounding cast that he has. You know, he manages the offense well. Um, I could certainly turn it over to uh, our safety here, Josh Copeland, and he can talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, what he sees in, uh, in this quarterback that he's going to face. Yeah, like Coach said, he's, he's managed the offense very well. He's, he's a very great passer. Um, he has great personnel around him, and they just, he just manages the offense very well. So it's going to be a great challenge, but we're up for it, and uh, it's going to be a good week. Josh, would you say the team has been happy with its performance so far this season? Oh. Anytime you lose is disappointing, you know. So every game we set out to win. Anytime you lose is disappointing. All we can do now is just look forward, um, learn from the mistakes we made, and go on. And our main focus now is on the OU. You know what I mean? So we're not really looking back. We're just learning from the mistakes and moving forward. So. Jeff, I know. I mean, you've had a conference game already, but the bulk of the schedule is ahead. Of you. How do you feel going into the conference games now with this team as opposed to the team that played the back schedule? Real good, you know, because when I see the film, and, and, and maybe not so much this past Saturday, uh, but, you know, you look at the previous games, uh, you look at our game against Ball State, you know, I saw a team that really fought and competed for four quarters and, and got themselves back with the lead. You know, we need to learn how to finish and, and really believe in uh, that somebody's going to make those key plays in critical moments. Uh, the UConn game, certainly when you look at the way our defense played against that offense, uh, they did a great job. You know, we need to do a better job uh, offensively of putting points on the board. And, you know, I like our plan. I like our approach. You know, we're very close. You know, we break it down, play in and play out player in and player out and I see effort uh, by our guys and we're getting better and uh, this is a you know obviously every week's a key week uh, but I like the way we match up and uh, certainly it's going to be a battle um, and, I, and I think our kids all understand how important it is to uh, uh, to continue to eliminate the mistakes you know number one mentally uh, and also to be out there and compete and uh, you know make those big plays when we need them. 
since the last two games? Is it a matter of, I mean, are you seeing things that you're doing wrong, or is it the competition you're playing? Assess your offense the last couple yeah, You know, I think it's been a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I certainly know that this past weekend, uh, you know, we were able to come back after being down 14 nothing with a big play. Uh, you know, Chaz did a great job uh, reading the, 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 the defensive end. And, you know, it was just perfectly executed. That's what you love when you when you see an offensive uh, play executed, um, you know, flawlessly because it can, re, you know, obviously, um, uh, you know, put the points on the board and, and get our offense in, in rhythm. Um, you know, you look back at the UConn game and, you know, you look back at us moving the ball all the way down, you know, early in the third quarter, middle of the third quarter. Uh, you know, I just – those are things that you look back at and you say, you know, if we capitalize, we tie the game up, you know, could have brought some more momentum our way. Um, you know, and then late in the game, you know, we weren't able to really finish and put ourselves in scoring position again. But, you know, I like our calls. Uh, you know, there's times that, uh, you know, the calls are – you know, we need to execute better, we need to play with better effort, and we need to finish. And Jeff, but Chaz's for completion percentage is either under or right around 50% in the last couple of games. Does that indicate anything to you at all? Is there anything to be drawn from where his game is at based on that? Well, it indicates that we need to do a better job of, uh, you know, catching the passes that are thrown. Plus, you know, if you look at it, even in the UConn game, uh, excuse me, the Tennessee game, I think we had seven throwaways. You know, and that hurts because those are opportunities that you're missing out on. Um, you know, whether it's a protection breakdown, whether it's, you know, the offensive line or whatever it may be, coverage-wise, you know, we need to – and he's making good decisions. You know, when you really look at uh, the interceptions, he's not just throwing the ball up for grabs, which I like, you know, from that standpoint. And sometimes you just got to, you know, uh, put the punt team out there and, and try to – you know, secure some field position to, to gain some momentum uh, with your defense. And, you know, obviously those are all things that are factored into it. But, you now Chaz is a tremendous competitor. He's in there right now watching film. And, you know, he certainly is not pleased with uh, the production and efficiency of our offense. Uh, so we just got to go back and just keep and keep coaching these kids, keep teaching them, uh, keep believing and inspiring them competitive greatness. And, you know, this is a great time to, to get it, put it all together on both sides of the ball and special teams. How much of that is the product of, uh, of the receivers? I mean, there was, you talked at the beginning of the year that the receiving core was the strength of this team. Um, you know, if, they're, if, if you're throwing the ball away, if guys aren't getting open, isn't that a reflection? Well, it's a little bit of up front, too. You know, at times, you know, I mean, last, you know, last week, you know, there was a couple of times where he had to flush uh, and avoid the uh, the rush. Um, you know, some of that is catching. It's it's about just being all locked in each and every single play. And, you know, we need more production out of our receivers, you know, and certainly our quarterback and our offensive line. And, you know, they understand that. We walked in there yesterday watching film and, you know, it was interesting because when you really look at some of the things that are breaking down, we are inches away from making great plays, you know, and that's what we got to keep showing these kids is there's evidence. You're this close, you know, and just lock in and, and just don't worry about all that other stuff. Uh, just just play football, uh, feel confident in what we're calling and what you're doing, and, and just continue to believe that these are the plays that you're going to make. And just picture yourself doing that. Visualize yourself being successful. And those things will uh, present themselves and giving the opportunity to be uh, successful and get us in some rhythm and so we can put some points on the board. OU's secondary has some pretty gaudy interception numbers. Is that a product? Uh, pressure coming from the line, forcing the opposition to make some bad decisions, or is it a product of their secondary coming up with those yeah, Great point, because I think it is a combination. You know, when we look at it, uh, you know, they do a good job of, of being where they need to be defensively and defending the, the routes, uh, but they also put some pressure, you know, and, and uh, anytime you can put pressure and make that qu quarterback uncomfortable, sometimes uh, a quarterback that, uh, you know, gets a little careless will throw the ball up in the air. And, uh, and that's what our quarterback's not doing right now, you know, which is a good thing. But we, you know, we need to do a great job on the offensive line, as I've said. You know, it starts up front, you know. And if we can give Chaz the kind of time and, and uh, you know, get our, our run game going, because that hasn't been uh, where we need it to be, uh, we're going to be able to be in a better ball control situation, move the chains, and put ourselves in position. But, uh, yeah, they've been very opportunistic. And, you know, we got to be careful um, on how we, you know, manage playing and play out and the way the players handle each and every situation that would present us.
Your run game got off to a good start, so now you say it's not working. What's happening? Well, we need to do a better job of, uh, you know, just sustaining and finishing. You know, I, you know, again, you know, when you look at last week, you look at personnel. Uh, you know, they that was a, trem a tremendous front seven. You know, best front seven we'll see all year. Uh, so I feel like at that point, you know, we need to do a better job uh, of getting back into that, you know, mindset that we're going to call the runs and, and every single run is going to have an opportunity to be successful. You know, as we look at our first and second down, we kind of got behind the chains a little bit Saturday, which hurt us, you know. And, it, you know, when things aren't clicking quite right and they had something to say about it, um, you know, it obviously puts you back into a throw mentality because you're trying to play catch up. Uh, <clears throat> where I feel like getting into this game, as I've said to the offensive staff and our offensive personnel, we need to do a better job of getting after it up front and finishing every single guy, finishing every single block. And it's not just O-line, it's about tight ends, it's about wide receivers. And that's what we were able to get in the first couple games, uh, that we are, you know, we slipped a little bit when we look at film. It's more of a mental thing, not a physical. It is more mental, absolutely. It, it is more mental. You know, it's a my. You need to control. All success happens uh, between the years, <laughs> uh, good and bad. You know, and and so you know we need to control our mindset. And uh, you know, I feel like our kids understand that. Um, you know, we've spent a lot of time evaluating film, looking at every single play, every single structural situation that presents itself. Um, you know, we just need to, you know, manage those things and those moments with our personnel. And if we do it mentally, uh, we're going to have the success. I know we'll get back on track with that aspect uh, because we're placing a huge emphasis on it at this point. When you're playing a team in, you know, the SEC in these higher levels of competition and things don't go as well as they would, uh, you know, hypothetically if you were playing against a Mac school, is it challenging not to get down on that to remember that the level of competition is higher? Well, you certainly need to know that, um, you know, why you play these games. And I understand that. We're not going to look at the rearview mirror. You know, we're not going to look in the rearview mirror. We're not going to look backwards. We're looking forward. Uh, we need to build on it. And we pointed out a lot of different uh, things that were really, really positive in that game against Tennessee. When you look at our special teams, you know, I challenged our, our entire uh, team to have two big plays in special teams. You're on the road. You need to create some uh, momentum. And uh, that's a great time to do it. And we were able to capitalize on uh, two turnovers on kickoff coverage and then we were able to block a punt you know and the unfortunate thing we weren't able to capitalize on it so you know our sudden change mentality uh we've got to be more opportunistic and, and understanding those moments in the game so you know i did feel like we took a lot uh away from that game in a positive sense uh and as josh said it's you know it's unacceptable to lose and it, it, it never feels good to do that but you know i think these kids have been through a lot you know, as a football program, you know, we talk a lot about overcoming adversity and, and persevering. And uh, when you play against a good team like Tennessee, you have to keep things in perspective. Are you satisfied with your, with your old O line play for the most part? I mean, have you contemplated change there? I mean, Carlson factored in there early on in training camp, had the injury, came out. Is, has there been any thought to, this, to, to reinserting him and to get the injury back at the guard? Well, we did do that Saturday, uh, Bob. We did move uh, Graham over to left guard and, and Jason in, you know, so we wanted to get Jason some time. Um, you know, he's ready to go, uh, you know, so he's done a good job and really just, you know, it's a good situation to have when you have more than five guys that can go in there and play, uh, you know, at, at a high level. And Jason is certainly in that mix right now. Um, you know, you look at a true freshman like Dylan Guy, who's done a tremendous job for us, just bringing a different mentality. He's a tough kid. He's, he, he, he's competitive as heck, and, you know, he does a good job in knowing his assignments. Uh, you know, there was a couple plays in there where, you know, he was matched. You know, he was challenged, you know, physically uh, against a great defense like Tennessee. But uh, we moved Graham out to guard, and we moved Carlson at center, and it settled us down a little bit. Uh, from that standpoint. So we're going to continue evaluating that each and every day, and I feel uh, Jason is ready to go, and we're going to give him an opportunity to keep compete, com keep competing for a starting position. Josh, can you talk uh, what has the challenge been like with the young secondary this season, and how do you think they have gotten better? How have they changed, or what do you think? Have they grown over the course of
coming in that we was a young secondary and um, we just took a lot from the guys in the past that we learned from the Devontae Shannons, the Josh Thomas, the Dom Cook. We took a lot from that and just coming in this year, we knew that sometimes um, we might struggle, but it's just overall defensively, we just look at, uh, we gotta look at it as an overall defense. You know what I mean? Like the secondary, we gotta cover, the D line has to rush, the linebackers have to, you know, get their pass drop. So we just gotta look at it overall defensively. So I wouldn't really say that, you know, our secondary is I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out the best way to answer your question. So, you know. The guy that's really stepped is Nyjah Johnson. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say that. Nyjah Johnson. A lot of people really... didn't realize that Nyjah, you know, here's a young man who uh, was a non scholarship walk on player <clears throat> who has done an outstanding job yeah. uh, sustaining his uh, responsibility and the coverage. If you look at his previous uh, couple games, uh, he's done an outstanding job. He even did it Saturday. Uh, from that standpoint, so you know, those are the great moments in this in this business when you get a guy like Nyjah to step up and play. You know, we had Isaac Ball and Josh Copeland, who was an outside linebacker a year ago, stepping in and doing a great job for us. So you know, the the secondary and everyone has it. When you have four seniors graduate, you're gonna have to have somebody step in and step up. And these guys are playing with effort. You flip on the film, they're playing with great effort. Um, you know, they're gonna be challenged this weekend now. You know, OU's got a yeah. nice uh, group of uh, receivers, and uh, it's going to be a great challenge with a good quarterback. So, now I'm excited about watching these kids play. Uh, they do a great job of studying film. Um, you know, and I think guys like Nyjah and Courtney Lester was a wide receiver a year ago who goes over on the secondary end of things and did it for the team to help us, uh, you know, shore up that back end, have done a great job. So when you really look at the four guys, there's only one secondary guy starting for us that really was a secondary guy, and that was Isaac Ball. Copeland was an outside linebacker. You know, Nyjah was a guy that kind of uh, worked his way up through special teams, and then uh, Courtney Lester is a wide receiver. So I feel good about where we are secondary-wise. Josh, sitting at one and four after the past few weeks, it'd be easy to get down on yourself. So you're really taking it upon yourself as a senior and the other seniors who are experienced on the team to you know, pick up the freshmen, the guys who are less experienced. Yeah, I mean, we, we have to. As, as senior leaders, we have to set the tone for the team. You know what I mean? Especially um, with us being one and four, it's, it's, very, it's not where we want to be. You know, so we have to set the tone, and it starts today in practice. You know, we had to have an, a, a totally clean slate. We swiped the slate clean. Um, we had to come out today in practice, have a great practice, and just, just take it one game at a time, one day at a time, not looking forward, not looking back. So that's the mindset we have to install on the younger guys who haven't really been through the struggles that, you know, that, that coming in at one and four that, some guys, guys do get down, but we had to, it's a long season, so we just got to take it one game at a time. Josh, knowing that this secondary, while it is young, will have opportunities or at least be challenged uh, from OU in their passing attack as a senior, how do you temper that excitement in the week building up for practice and make sure there is ex execution there and try to kind of reel in that excitement knowing that the secondary is going to have probably a lot of chances to make big plays? Yeah, I mean, from a secondary standpoint, anytime you play a team that passes the ball a lot, you do get excited because that, that's, that's what we do. We like to cover, and that's what we do. So um, just coming in here, just making sure guys are focused, play in and play out, day in and day out, making sure you, you know your assignment and you execute your job on the field. Don't, don't let the moment take uh, control of you. Just be calm, just be patient, and just do your job. That, that's all the coaches ask for us. That's all we can ask. That's all we can do. Just do your job every play and let the score take care of itself. Josh, you notice that this is a little bit of a different kind of Ohio offense than you've seen in the past. They've mostly sort of had option kind of running quarterbacks the last couple of years where it sure sounds like they're a little more of a throw it around offense. Have you sense that it's a little different than what you've seen in the past 40 years in your career? Yeah, yes. I mean, this, this year they, they definitely do like to throw the ball more down vertically, you know what I mean? As you said in the past, they've been more of an option team and a gadget team. So this year, we're, we're really excited in the secondary because we're gonna have a lot of chances to show our growth, as Coach said, and to show the maturity that guys have shown throughout the last couple of games. So it's gonna do an exciting game for us. Uh, what is, you talk about what Carlson brings to your line, he's healthy and, and well, you know, good size, uh, you know, very tenacious blocker. You know, he likes to exert his will, you know, and in terms of the way he approaches 
uh, his blocky mechanics, and that's what you love about a guy uh, like him. He, he's just, uh, you know, a tremendous uh, young man that uh, is just chomping at the bit, you know, to try to get in there and really sustain uh, one of those spots to be that guy each and every play for an entire game. Um, you know, and when you look at his play Saturday, he, you know, again, very few mistakes. I mean, and when he man, you know, when he sits in that, uh, in his protection fits and you know his body mechanics, he's he's got a good solid base underneath him, um, you know, and and he's able to play, you know, to the echo of the whistle, and that's what you love about having a guy like him. And he was the guy that was beginning out in the season, you know, until he went down with a little bit of a knee, and now he's kind of getting back to that point where he's able to go. And I was glad to see him get in against Tennessee so we could really test him more than just a few days in practice. I mean, I'm talking about a live game and live situations. For, and I think he got somewhere around 20, 22 plays in that game Saturday, So which and he did very well in. Can you just speak to the, the place kicking game? I mean, it's been a bit of a, a roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, you know, up and down, and, and, and that's really, you know, when you look at it, when we lost uh, A.J. Principe, who was our leading scorer, you know, in the history of UB football, and, and then John Rahuna was the kicker, and then we asked Pete, and, and Pete was uh, up for the challenge, you know, and you bring him in and, to handle all the PAT duties. Um, you know, he's been well, he's done well there. Uh, certainly the field goal uh, situation, you know, and again, it's just uh, if he had been doing it longer, you, you would think like, hey, you should expect all those to go through the upright. But he had not been doing it. He has not been place kicking in his entire career. He's been a punter, you know. So, but I feel his work ethic, his maturity, you know, has all been there, and uh, he understands, you know, his role and responsibility. And I just feel like if we keep giving him, that's what late in the game did for me in that game Saturday. I needed to get him back out there. You know, and I, I wanted some points in that situation. And I was thinking, how do I get him in a, in a competitive situation against a very good SEC school and to get him the rebound? Because if we hadn't, we would have, you know, because he obviously missed the first one. You know, and he was able to capitalize on that, which was uh, a good sign. So it gave, gave him some confidence coming off the field so we can uh, call on him later in the season. And we're going to need him big. Um, and Pat's done a good job kicking off. You know, and I feel like he's a guy that, too, is getting better at uh, some of the longer range field goal situations that potentially maybe we may call on him to do that. Can you speak to any injuries you might have, too? I mean, we didn't, was Chaz okay if we didn't see him after? Yeah, Chaz is fine. He's, uh, you know, again, he went down for uh, a few uh, for a series, and then he came right back in, finished the game, uh, or finished, you know, even though we got Zordis back in there twice. You know, he came in when Chaz went down, uh, but he. Chaz came back and he's he's doing quite well. Uh, yesterday, no issues. You know, he took all the reps. Um, you know, he feels good about where he's at. And uh, same thing with Courtney Lester. I mean, no issues there. Uh, we've been relatively lucky in regards to our health, and uh, you know, it just speaks to volumes of the the type of training our kids have done all summer. Getting ready for the season. On the uh, related special teams note, um, Jake Shum has been pretty good this year, top five in the MAC. Uh, what has he been able to do to be more consistent, sort of elevate his game as your partner? Locking in. You know, I think just mentally. I mean, when you – that the good thing is when we go out to practice, I mean, he's one of the first guys out there and, you know, really all our specialists are. And, you know, he's just got a great attitude, you know, about it. And he just believes in himself and he believes in everything going on. And he just – you can't help but admire a young man who just – you could see that his uh, his play reflects his passion for the game and, and the University of Buffalo and his football team. And that's why he's having so much success. And, you know, and he's a competitor. He wants to even be better than that. And he wants to bring others around him. Uh, to get to that level. So, you know, his his mindset is exactly where we want it, and I uh, couldn't be more proud of that young man. And, you know, we're going to keep, keep counting on him to, to keep improving and helping our football team gain the field position that we need. Thank you.